Who's the best? We've done elite infantry, elite cavalry, elite monsters. Now it's time for the little guys, the low tier infantry. Cheap, but sometimes very effective. Not to be confused with expendable units though, like Skaven Slaves, Peasant Mob and Zombies. Those are just crappy get in the way expendable units. These units are also that, but they can potentially do some damage. So we're going to take the best low tier infantry from each faction, smash them into each other and see which one is the best. So if you've seen one of these before, you probably know how it goes. It's going to be a 5v5 of each unit competing. If there's no clear winner and it happens to be close, we'll run it again and maybe again until we get a definite winner. And most of these units are going to be one handed weapon and shield units. There are going to be a few anomalies though, as some factions don't have that or they have an anti-large version of that, such as the High Elf Spearmen. I decided to include these units though, as I thought people would want to see how the matchups go with them, because especially High Elf Spearmen, for example, you always see them on High Elves very often, so it's good to know which units can beat them. This is going to be useful for multiplayer, but also campaign as well, although campaign can be a little bit more of a sketchy area because units get so many buffs that Empire Swordsmen that beat a certain unit might not beat a certain unit in campaign because that unit's buffed up. So do take everything with a pinch of salt if you're relating it to campaign. But hey, let's get on with it. Let's start by looking at all the units in the competition. And there is one for every single faction. For the Beastie Boys, it's the Gore Herd with shields. For the French, the Men at Arms with shields. For the Sex Elves, Bleak Swords. For the Little Guys, it's the Dwarf Warriors. Sigmar's chosen the Swordsmen for the Empire, of course. Gork and Mork's chosen, the Orc Boys for the Greenskins. For the High Elves, hey, it's those Spearmen. Lizards rolling up with the Skink cohort, including Happy Skink. Look at his little face. For the Norskins, Marauders. For the Skaven, Clan Rats with Shields. Misses. Skeleton Warriors for the Tomb Kings. Drunken looking pirates for the Vampire Coast in the Deck Hands mob, or Dick Hands if you prefer. More Skeleton Warriors for the Vampire Counts. More Marauders as well, with the Chaos this time. Chaos Marauders. And lastly, for the Wood Elves, the Tree Ladies, the Dryads. So that's all the units we're going with. They all cost between 300 and 550. I tried to keep it within a certain range and we're gonna break this up into the bottom five, the middle five and the top five, of course. So let us begin. We'll kick it off with some of the little fellas, the clan rats with shields and the skinks, both at the lower end of the cost spectrum. We'll see if one of these two is gonna take the title of the worst unit in the competition, the one that loses to all other infantry. Looks like the clan rats are pulling ahead here. They do cost a little bit more than the skinks, so you would think that they should win this. But hey, maybe Happy Skink and his boys have got a little trick up their sleeve. Well, they don't. Unfortunately for the lizards, clan rats completely wipe the floor with skinks, taking a 5 and 0. Oh. Okay, so the poor skinks can't beat anything more expensive than them, it seems. What about something that costs the same? The Dick Hands mob. They cost 300 as well as the skinks do. Let's see if they can take them down. Very low damage output for the Deckhands mob, but of course they are an undead unit, so they're unbreakable. Maybe that will help them as this fight wears on. Fairly even damage for both sides. A little bit more from the Deckhands mob, perhaps. But we'll have to see if the Skinks have the damage output to put those undead away before they rout themselves. It's looking pretty good so far. It's about the same. Deckhands mob wavering they'll be crumbling a little bit that'll help the skinks out not so good over here though for the skinks oh they're wavering now it's not looking good and good it was not for the skinks in this competition overall unfortunately for lizard men they do have the worst low tier infantry in the game it seems because skinks lost to everybody couldn't even beat the deck hands mob the poor little fellas so there you go what about some skeletons and some marauders Skeletons generally known for being one of those units that just sticks around and gets in the way most of the time. They're not exactly super tough, but they can last because they are unbreakable. Not really got a lot of damage output though. Whereas the Marauders are kind of the other way around. They won't stick around for a long time, but they will do some fair damage while they are getting stuck in. 
In this case though, despite the skeletons having fear, which will be good against that low leadership of the Marauders, they weren't able to put out enough damage and simply stand up to those Chaos Marauders. So no good against those Chaos boys were the skeletons. All right, here's one for all you necrophiliacs, a little corpse on corpse action. <laughs> Can I say that? Probably not. Skeleton Warriors versus Skeleton Warriors for the Tomb Kings and the Vampire Counts. Little advantage for the Tomb Kings in that they'll get their healing as the battle goes on. And they do cost a fraction more than the Vampire Count Skeleton Warriors. So they should win. They cost a little more. They have healing. They're pretty much identical in the stats. Although the Tomb Kings have a silver shield. Oh, this guy's lost his head. <laughs> is he still going to keep fighting? Of course he is. What a trooper. This guy doesn't need a skull to fight. At least he's immune to headshots now, I suppose. Uh, but yeah, the Tomb King shield is much bigger and is actually a silver shield, whereas the Vampire Count shield is only a bronze shield, so maybe that's what you're paying the little bit extra for. Here comes the healing, though. But you'd think, with the Tomb Kings having a much bigger shield than the Vampire Count skeletons, that they would get more melee defense, but they actually don't. They have the same, so that's kind of odd. They should probably have a little bit more, as their shield is considerably larger. It would make more sense, but in this case, can the healing help the Tomb Kings hold on? They've been wavering for a while. They've been getting all their heals, and it's looking like, well, it's looking pretty even, actually. Oh, they've won at the end. Tomb Kings win one. Tomb Kings win two and three. Can they take a four and five? It's close, it's close. It's close, it's close. Down they go. Tomb Kings taking it. And it seems like they are the best undead unit able to beat the Skeleton Warriors, the Deckhands mob, and also those Skinks. But can they beat the Bretonians? The men-at-arms with shields. Bretonians not known for their infantry, of course. Their low leadership often a problem for them. The fear of the skeletons might come into play here and make those Bretonians rout before they get a chance to do enough damage. But skeletons taking a fair bit of damage here from these Bretonians. They're not messing around. Not taking too much damage in return either. As we said, skeletons don't have great damage output. They're just about being sticky and annoying and getting in the way for a while. Getting some heals. Maybe those can help them hold on a little longer and rout off those Bretonians. Although it's not looking good. The biggest problem for the Skeleton Warriors is their lack of melee attack. So they don't land their hits very often, thus their damage output is pretty damn slow. Which is why they need to fight for a long time to really be able to do anything. Although, like I said, they're not really about doing damage. In this case, the Bretonians are able to trump them. And the Bretonians able to trump all of the undead and the skinks, making them the top of the bottom five. And these were our bottom five units. We've got them marked up on this graph here. Red representing a loss, green representing a win. Skinks unable to beat anybody in this competition, as I mentioned. Followed by the deckhands mob who could only beat the skinks and lost to all the other undead and all the other units. Then it's the skeleton warriors with the vampire counts having the lesser skeleton warriors that lost to the tomb king skeleton warriors. And as I mentioned, tomb kings the best of the best in the undead factions. Able to beat the other two undead and the skinks, but not able to beat the Bretonians, the men-at-arms, who were able to beat all of those units, but nobody else. So that's the bottom five. Let's move on to the middle five. Let's kick it off with the two units that are kind of the anomalies in this competition, the Dryads and the High Elf Spearmen. The Spearmen are an anti-large unit, so not quite the same as most of these other units, and the Dryads don't have a shield, so they're kind of a little bit different and slightly more of a damage dealer, and more at the expensive end of this competition. Now, I did choose Dryads over Eternal Guard with shields, because I thought that Eternal Guard with shields would kind of be the same as High Elf Spearmen, but I forgot that they had armor piercing, so what we're going to do at the end is we are going to check the Eternal Guard against some of the top three units to see how well they do and see if they would actually really be up there with some of the top units, because Eternal Guard with Shields are a very common unit to see used for the Wood Elves. Maybe more than Dryads, I don't know, you seem to see Dryads a lot these days. And I thought they'd fit a bit more with the competition, being more of kind of a damage type unit rather than anti-large. But so far, it looks like the Dryads are slapping the High Elf Spearmen down pretty effectively. Although the Dryads are taking a fair bit of punishment from the High Elf Spearmen. This isn't a great competition for the High Elf Spearmen, as I mentioned. They're more of an anti-large unit. You're paying for that anti-large, and it's not really coming into effect here. But of course, this is the cheapest unit for the High Elves. This is their chaff option, which isn't really chaff at all, because it's pretty expensive and pretty strong. But it doesn't look like it's going to be strong enough here to withstand the Dryads, who do cost a slight bit more. They do have magical attacks, though, which you're kind of not really getting the use of in this competition. So there's things that you're paying for with both of these units, which you're not necessarily always getting use of like the magic damage, like the anti-large bonus, 
But in this case, Dryad's able to top the High Elf Spearman. Okay, so they couldn't take on the more expensive Dryads, but can they take on the less expensive Clan Rats with Shields? The High Elves, that is. Charges coming in. Only a little damage taken by the Spearmen and by the Clan Rats. The trouble for the High Elf Spearmen in this kind of competition is that against infantry, they don't have their extra melee attack from their bonus versus large. So that kind of slows down their output, their damage output, which is why anti-large units are really best fighting large stuff. They can hold off these kind of lesser units, infantry units, well enough, but it's never really going to be the best use of what you're paying for. But sometimes that's inevitable. You just have to go with what comes at you sometimes in battles. You can't pick and choose perfectly every single matchup. But hey, that's the way of battles. High Elf Spearman actually taking a fair bit of damage here from these Clan Rats. Let's see how it goes as we press on. Clan Rats, of course, taking a fair amount of damage too, but giving it back to those High Elves. Wavering from the Rats, wavering from all the Rats, and it looks like the High Elf Spearmen are going to do it. But the Clan Rats with shields done a, done a respectable amount of damage, I think. Got them down to half health. Not bad for a unit that costs considerably less than the High Elf Spearmen. So they're not going to beat them and get through them, but they can take half the health off. Not too bad from the Clan Rats. But unfortunately for the Clan Rats, this is where they draw the line. They weren't able to beat anyone in this competition other than the bottom five. So they are the bottom of the middle five. But what about these High Elf Spearmen then? How far can they take it? Well, they'll surely be tested by the Empire Swordsmen. Not swordsmen that are really known for their prowess on the battlefield, but they're not bad. They're not bad, the Empire Swordsmen. They're the epitome of average, let's say. We'll see if they can take down the more expensive High Elf Spearmen. But of course, expensive in this case doesn't really apply so much because the High Elf Spearmen aren't in their ideal situation. So can the Empire Swordsmen put enough damage on the Spearmen who do have pretty good melee defense? So they can survive pretty well against infantry regardless of it not being the perfect fight for them. Looks like a pretty even fight so far. Empire Swordsmen may be pulling ahead slightly in some cases. But will that hold on as the fight goes on? Well, yes it will. The Swordsmen are able to beat the High Elf Spearmen for the most part. Winning one here, taking a fair pounding themselves, but still got enough health left to do a little something else after. They're not completely useless now. High Elf Spearmen though, unable to top the Empire Swordsmen, and that is the end of the line for the High Elf Spearmen. They're not able to beat anybody else. They were able to beat the Clan Rats and all of the bottom five, and that's it. Nobody else. So, not quite doing as well as I would have expected. I honestly thought they would hold off Empire Swordsmen and maybe the Marauders as well, but they couldn't do it. Although they are going to eventually win this little fight, so they will take it a 4-1. Not a complete sweep. Let's give the Empire Swordsmen a real test then with the Greenskins Orc Boys. A very hard-hitting frontline unit coming in on the charge against the Empire Swordsmen. Empire Swordsmen taking damage quickly. Orc Boys taking some as well but not quite as much. War coming in. We are going to allow the war because it is one of the things that you would most likely have to face if you were fighting the Greenskins, and they would get that little buff against you. Same as the Murderous Mastery for the Dark Elves, the Healing for the Tomb Kings, the Martial Prowess for the High Elves. So we decided to allow it in the competition, as we always do. Empire Swordsman, though, not really up to task here, getting absolutely smashed by the Orc Boys very quickly as well. No time wasted. It's bye-bye for the Sigmar's lads. Greenskins taking this one. But how far can the Empire Swordsmen go? Can they take on the Norskin Marauders? Who are a little bit different than the other Chaos Marauders because they have the Rage ability, which makes them stronger the longer they fight, basically. Whether they'll get long enough to fight in these battles to make use of that, we shall see. Pretty even damage on the charge from these two units. No clear leader, really. Pretty much the same amount of health lost. You can see the Rage trait gives leadership after 45 seconds and then adds on physical resistance after another 45 seconds and then adds on some melee attack after another 45 seconds. But whether these boys can fight for that long is really the question. I don't think they very often reach their final stage. They've gained their leadership there. They've got the first stage of Rage and maybe it is helping them here against the Empire Swordsmen. They beat them there. One up for the Marauders. Can they take them all? We can see the extra 8 leadership down in the bottom left on the unit card. And that's really going to help them out as they generally have pretty low leadership anyway, as Norskan units do. But one win for the Marauders, two wins for the Marauders. A close one here. A win for the Empire down the end. So 2-1. It's 2-1 so far. The other fight still up in the air. So these two are going to be the deciders. Marauders struggling. 
It's very, very close though. They both have very little left. The Marauders, a little bit worse off though. Empire taking it 2-2. It all comes down to this final one. And the Marauders be wavering. They're struggling. Looks like they're a little outnumbered, although not by much. Only just. Can they hang on? If they get that extra buff after another 45 seconds, they might be able to wing it back. The Marauders, that is. But this was actually one of the closest fights in the competition that we had to run a bunch of times. And they're both wavering here. You can see how goddamn close this is. I'll save us some time though, because this does go on for a while. Ultimately, it was the Marauders who lost this one. They lost more often than the Empire Swordsman did, so we declared Swordsman the winner of this matchup. Very, very close though. Could call it either way. What about some Marauder on Marauder action then? Who's the best Marauder? The Chaos Marauders or the Norsken Marauders? Norsken Marauders are slightly more expensive and do have that Rage ability, which the Chaos Marauders don't have. So in theory, we should see the Norsken Marauders take the victory here, but it's pretty even so far, both dishing out a fair amount of damage. Their base stats, though, are identical. You can see the unit cards not changing at all when I switch between the two units. The only difference is that Rage ability, so it's pretty much an even fight until 45 seconds hits, and then the Norsken Marauders get the extra leadership, and then another 45 seconds, so a minute and a half, they'll get that physical resistance. Whether the fight will go on that long, though, is another question. When it came down to it, though, the Norsken Marauders were able to prevail. The Chaos Marauders winning one, though. They did pull one back, losing the other four, however. So Chaos Marauders able to beat Norsken Marauders, High Elf Spearmen, and the Clan Rats, but not quite able to top anybody else. So it's the end of the line for them. And to come back to the Dryads, they've been able to beat all the previous units we've looked at, the Chaos Marauders, the High Elf Spearmen, the Clan Rats, and the Bottom Five, as have the Empire Swordsmen. They've all beaten all of those units, so this one is going to see who makes it in to the top five, and who is at the top of the middle five, if that makes sense. So whoever wins this one is going into the top five. Pretty even damage so far. Dryads cost about 150 more than Empire Swordsmen, so you'd think they should win it. They have the physical resistance to reduce the damage they take from units that don't have magical attacks, which is pretty much all the units in this competition, apart from Dryads themselves. Looks like they're edging it on the Swordsmen, which is kind of surprising that they're not running over them a lot easier because they do cost more. They obviously get bonuses in the forest as well, do the Dryads, which they're not going to get out here in these tests. So there are some of their abilities, like the Woodsman or Strider trait, whatever it's called, not really coming into use here, but they're able to put away the Empire Swordsmen by the looks of it. They're all wavering. They've all got decent health left, the Dryads. So this should be a pretty easy sweep, and the Dryads are going to take it into the top five, leaving the Empire, though, at the top of the middle five. Maybe doing better than you might have expected. So, taking a closer look at the middle five, at the bottom of them, we've got the Clan Rats with shields, able to beat all of the bottom five, but nobody else. Above them, though, somewhat surprisingly, the High Elf Spearmen, able to beat the Clan Rats, but none of the others. Not even Empire Swordsmen, not Bleak Swords, not Marauders. A little bit surprising, I thought. I imagined with their martial prowess giving the extra melee defense and things, they would just be able to hold out and outgrind the other units a bit more, but apparently not. They couldn't take the damage too well. After that, it was the Chaos Marauders beating everyone below them, but not able to top the Norsken Marauders, who are superior with their rage trait. But they're not superior enough to beat the Empire Swordsmen, but only just. It was very close. If you do send your Marauders to fight Empire Swordsmen, it's going to be pretty much a stalemate for the most part. You might win, you might lose. It's going to be very, very close, and both units are going to get absolutely pounded either way. But Empire Swordsmen sitting on the top of the middle five, not quite able to break into the top five, which leaves the Orc Boys, Dryads, Dwarf Warriors, Bleak Swords, and Gore Herd with shields in the top five, able to beat all of these units we've seen so far. So let's see who's the best. We'll kick it off with some boys we haven't seen yet in the Bleak Swords. They're taking on the Dryads. Fairly even damage on the initial charge. Dryads, of course, a little bit more expensive. About 100 more expensive than Bleak Swords. But they are taking a pounding. Bleak Swords actually dishing out quite a bit of damage as the fight wears on. And they don't really have anything too special about them. They are pretty much the same as Empire Swordsmen, except they have much better melee attacks. So they do more damage, generally a little bit quicker than most. And obviously, they'll have their Murderous Prowess in a minute as well, which will likely push them into the victory, which they're probably going to get anyway. Although Dryad's giving it back, but maybe not quite enough. 
Oh, one wavering. One bleak swords be wavering. These dryads might win here. They're looking good. Oh, maybe two. Maybe I spoke too soon about the bleak swords. Although there goes murderous prowess. That'll give them the extra damage output. Maybe the bleak swords can turn it around with that. Wavering dryads. Looks like they are going to turn it around. And they do. Able to beat the Dryads, although very, very, very close. As you can see, these battles are all right on the edge. Very, very close. Could go either way, but Bleak Swords are able to just about scrape ahead here, even though they do cost less, so they are going to top a more expensive unit. So they can top all of the units below them in the middle and bottom five. They can beat the Dryads. What about the Dwarf Warriors, Orc Boys, and Gore Herd? Well, let's get some goats in there and find out. Gore Herd versus Bleak Swords. Goreherd are one of the more expensive units at 550, so they're a little bit above most. Both taking a fair pounding so far. Goreherd though, able to beat all of that bottom and middle five. We're also able to put the Dryads away, so looking good for the top three or four perhaps. And Goreherd of course have pretty low leadership being Beastmen, but they do have Frenzy which keeps them going. And when that Frenzy goes away, that's when they might start to struggle, which is when... The Bleak Swords might get their Murderous Mastery, which might actually help them turn this one around. Which they might need because the Gore Herd pulling ahead in some cases. Gore Herd do hit pretty hard. They do have a decent charge bonus and with that Frenzy, it can add up. Here comes Murderous Prowess though. Can that help the Bleak Swords turn it around? They do get a lot of extra damage output from this. Extra melee attack, extra damage, leadership as well, vigor. Quite a lot going for them when this pops. It lasts a while as well. So will it help them hold on? Some wavering gore herd. Looks like they might be able to do it. They might be able to turn this one around. Some of them are really close. Some a little bit more decided, like this one. Looks like the gore herd will win that one. This one, again, gore herd looking good. It's 27 to 45 goats left. That's a pretty big difference. So both of these good damage dealers, even though this is kind of a low tier thing. They're good at damage dealing against other low tier infantry and maybe some middle tier infantry as well, as long as there isn't too much armor on them. But it's looking like the Gore Herd. Oh no, they're wavering. There's a couple of Gore Herd wavering. It's anybody's guess who's going to win this. Gore Herd have won one here. One up for the Gore Boys. Oh, two up for the Gore Boys. They're looking good. Oh, there's the third. That's the win of the round. The fourth. Oh dear. And maybe the fifth. Maybe the fifth. Maybe the Bleak Swords can pull one back. Get a little bit of honor back, although it's not looking good for him, to be honest. There's a lot of goats left. But it's a very, very, very close matchup. In the heat of battle, that could definitely go either way, depending on battlefield factors around them. But Gore Herd, looking good. Do the Beastmen actually have the best of something? Now to some more fellas we haven't seen yet. The Dwarf Warriors, facing the Dryads. And Dwarf Warriors, of course, very high in the armor, which makes it difficult for a lot of these low-tier infantries to deal with, because they don't have armor piercing, typically. So naturally, they've beaten all of the middle five and the bottom five, but where will they land in the top five? Not taking too much damage so far and given a fair bit to the Dryads. And despite being pretty tough, the Dwarf Warriors don't have great damage output. It's pretty slow overall, so they're not going to kill anyone quickly, but they simply outlast people, right? That's what the Dwarfs do best. They just stay alive while you die slowly. That's the Dwarf way in Total War Warhammer. And they're looking good to beat these Dryads. Dryads just simply can't get enough damage through that big tough heavy armor of the dwarfs. Also dryads with their magical attacks against the 25% magic resistance of the dwarfs is going to make them struggle even more. Dryads mostly down to half health. Same story in all of these fights really. It's not looking good for them. And good they weren't. Unable to beat the dwarf warriors. A clean sweep for the dwarf warriors as well. Looking pretty tough. Pretty good in this competition. Are they the best? Let's find out what they can do against the Green Boys. The Greenskins well known for their tough infantry and their frontline killing power, but is it enough to take down heavily armored dwarfs of the same cost? These two units cost exactly the same at 450. The war coming off, is that going to help them turn it around? Orc Boys are taking a fair bit of damage. Slowly churning through the dwarfs, but it's pretty even actually. Will the frontline killing power top the endurance of the dwarfs? War gives them that extra armor piercing. Maybe that can help them. Maybe that can help them do it. Still fairly even. About halfway for both sides. In most cases. Another war coming off though. That war going up quick early on. That could be the decider. 
Greenskins, generally some of the best infantry in the game. Dwarfs, though, also some of the best infantry in the game. Uh, that's mostly because their entire army is only infantry anyway. So they kind of win by default in that sense. Greenskins, though, maybe pulling ahead. These dwarf warriors falling behind. Can the green boys do it? Looking good in this one. The health gap is widening. Pretty much double health for the greenskins in some of these matchups compared to the dwarfs. And what do you know? It's a GG for the dwarfs. They're done. Unable to beat the Orc Boys. Orc Boys able to smash them down, although very beaten up in the process. Not much left for them to do after they've beaten them because they're going to be routed by whatever hits them next. But they can win this one. They can beat the Dwarfs 5-0. Easy, mate. But can the Dwarfs take on the Gore Herd then? Same issue as the Greenskins that they have low leadership, but they do hit hard and obviously no armor piercing, so that's going to make it harder for them. But can the Dwarfs hold out that little bit longer? Once Frenzy wears off, they probably are going to struggle to stick around. They've done some good damage on this charge, though. The Dwarfs have caught a less health already. The Goats, though, really lacking in the armor overall. The Greenskins at least have a little bit more. Of course, you're paying for Vanguard deployment as well with some of these Beastmen units. So that's kind of affecting what the price is. Even though the Gore Herd are more expensive here, you're not using what you're really paying for in the Vanguard deployment. Maybe that Woodsman perk as well, where they can run through forests. That isn't helping them here. So you're kind of paying for that and it's not going to be much use. So them being more expensive doesn't necessarily mean that they're going to be a superior unit just because they cost a little bit more. Starting to even out a little bit. Dwarf Warriors looking good in this one. Maybe looking good in this end one as well. It's pretty close though. We'll see how it wears on. Dwarf Warriors losing more and more health. And the gap is widening between Goat and Dwarf. It's looking good for the Goats. Depends if their leadership holds up. It's not looking too bad. But neither is the Dwarf's leadership. They will very often fight to the last few Dwarfs. Looking good on this end one. Maybe they can win a few. Maybe they can push us into a 3-2, even if they lose. Make us run it again. And truth be told, it was a very, very close one again, but the Dwarfs couldn't do it. They were topped by the Goats. They didn't quite have the staying power to hang around. They did win one matchup, actually, so not completely wiped out. And the Dwarf Warriors were able to beat the Dryads and the Bleak Swords, putting them in third place in this competition, as the Bleak Swords were able to beat the Dryads, but nobody else, so they took fourth. So who's number one? Well, we're going to find out right here because it's the Gore Herd versus Gork and Mork's lads, the Orc Boys. Both of these two infantries able to beat all of these other infantries in this competition. The Greenskins well known for having those tough frontline units, as are the Beastmen. But the Beastmen have been one of those factions that have kind of fallen behind in the balancing. And they've not really done very well in any of these who's the best tests, making their faction look pretty damn crappy. But here they are making a play to be the best. Can they do it versus the Orc Boys? Here comes the big charge. Both going to take a lot of damage on this, I imagine. Both hit pretty hard on that charge. The Frenzy for the Beastmen. The War will come in shortly for the Greenskins, I'm sure. Both taking a fair amount of damage. Greenskins a little bit more, perhaps. But here comes the War. Can that turn it around? Both losing health pretty quick. I don't think this one's going to last very long. Very even. It's bang on even. Of course, the Gore Herd do cost more. But like I said, their traits aren't really going to be useful here. Greenskin's starting to edge it in this one, I think. Oh, Wavering Gore Herd. Two lots of Wavering Goats. Oh, the Wire's coming in. That might finish him off. That might make it a green victory day. Can they hold on? Nope, these ones are gone. These ones are gone. That's two down. Three down. Oh, there's four down and five down. It's a clean sweep for the goddamn Greenskins. They are the best. This is why I always tell people, don't try to beat the Greenskins on the front line. This is their house. It's their game. You can't win. Don't even try. Good effort, though, from the Gore Herd. But Orc Boys are the best. And with that, we get our final results. We can see Dryads able to beat everyone except any of the other top five units. Followed by the Bleak Swords, who do have good damage output and enough to beat up everybody except the top three which includes those Dwarf Warriors in at number 3. Very tough, the armor makes them survive and just outlast everybody for the most part. But it is the two damage dealer units that have taken the top spot with the Gore Herd, 
able to beat everybody, and this was kind of surprising to me. I didn't quite expect the Gore Herd to do so well, even though they are one of the more expensive units in the competition, their traits weren't really being used, so they were probably more like 450-500, which is about the same price as most of the units in this competition. But the Greenskins, taking the top spot, able to beat all of the other low-tier infantries in the game. The War, no doubt, coming into play to help that happen as well, but there it is. The Greenskins are the best. If we put all this information in a ranking with the unit's cost next to them, we can see it all pretty much shows that price dictates performance. We start at the bottom with the low 300 units, moving up through 325, 350, 375, the only anomaly there being the Spearmen, who of course aren't really built for this competition. And then we move up through the 400s and up to 550, with it all looking pretty normal except for the Dryads, who again, don't really fit the bill of this competition normally. They don't have skills that are useful in this competition. The same as the Gore Herd. They're at the top, but they were beaten by a less expensive unit in the Orc Boys. But they have those traits that aren't being used. Thus, it's not really a wrong place for them to be. Although it did come a, a bit of a surprise that the Gore Herd were able to beat the Dwarf Warriors and the Bleak Swords as well. So good on the Beastmen for actually doing well in one of these competitions for a change. But we'll see what happens if the Beastmen get an update. Maybe that'll make them better or worse, or maybe they'll stay the same. They seem okay where they are. But you really need to make use of either Vanguard deployment or the Forest to make the use of all their abilities. I have to say though that I thought the High Elf Spearmen would do better in this competition. At least maybe being able to beat the Marauders and the Swordsmen as they cost 100 less. Perhaps not the 450 and 550 cost units, but at least those slightly cheaper ones. But apparently not. I thought their extra high melee defense from martial prowess would help them survive those kind of units, but there you go, what do you know? But for the most part, price dictated performance in this competition. But what about those Eternal Guard with shields, I hear you cry? Well, let's test them out against those top three Orc Boys, Gorehood, and Dwarf Warriors. So, as I mentioned earlier, didn't put these in the competition because I thought they'd be the same as High Elf Spearmen, really, but they do have armor piercing, which I forgot about. So against the Dwarfs here, this could come into play. This could help them because they're the only unit in this competition that will actually have armor piercing, I think. So maybe they could beat the Dwarfs, and they do cost 550. So you are getting those kind of wasted anti-large skills, but still, you've got the armor piercing there. And that's only going to be useful in this kind of competition. So useful, in fact, it does allow the Eternal Guard with shields to beat the Dwarf Warriors. That's right. So they would knock them off the third spot, potentially. They're up there. They're up there with the big boys. But can they take on the big boys? Well, going up against Goreherd, they take a lot of damage on that charge. That really does hurt them quite a lot. And the armor-piercing damage of the Eternal Guard, not going to be that useful here because the Beastmen don't really have much armor on anyway. They're used to taking the full effect of a unit's damage. Unfortunately for the Eternal Guard, though, they are not made of the top two stuff. They did lose to the Goreherd and also got pretty damn badly crumped by the Orc Boys as well. So definitely up there as one of the top units in the top five and certainly performing better than the High Elf Spearmen did. And I didn't test it, but I do imagine they would outlast the Chaos Marauders and the Swordsmen as well because of that armor piercing damage. But there we go. Wood Elves not too shabby with their Eternal Guard, but Orc Boys still the best. So there we have it. The best low tier infantry in Total War Warhammer 2. Is this what you expected? Did you expect somebody to do better or worse than they actually did? Let me know. I hope you've enjoyed this. Thanks for watching. I'll see you in the future.